When's the last time you saw someone cast a limb duels vault? Oh yeah. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben you here for another legacy video and today we are going to be playing with a blue black death shadow deck list. Now blue black decks are all over the place in legacy right now. The Rescaminator deck that is the blue black uh, grief reanimator deck with strong tempo elements is very popular and you still see a little bit of death shadow floating around as well. Since the Grief Reanimate package is so popular in Legacy right now, it makes sense that people are messing around with the Death Shadow Shell as well, as Reanimate is one of the best ways to quickly lower your life total to turn Death Shadow into a giant, far above co like cost efficiency creature. And today we're going to be playing a list that is uh, maybe a little bit spicy. Most of the stuff in here is kind of good in stock, but we've got some sweet flex slots with Limb Duel's Vault being the most exciting one. So this is something that used to see maybe not a decent amount, but some amount of play in Legacy as a pseudo-tutor. You look at the top five cards of your library as many times as you choose. You can pay one life to put those cards on the bottom of your library in any order, and then look at the top five again. Ultimately, you shuffle your library and put the last five that you looked at on top in any order. So the way that this card has traditionally been used in Legacy is as a pseudo-tutor. You use this to find your, your Doomsday, your Show and Tell, your Storm combo piece, whatever it is that you're looking for. But we're actually more interested in the ability to intentionally control our life total one point of life at a time, because that has great synergy with Death Shadow. At the same time, this is also a cantrip that gets around Orcish Bowmasters, which is kind of a big deal when Bowmasters is about 40% of the format on any given day. Today's video is sponsored by IntoTheAM.com, and I absolutely love their graphic tees. I am not exaggerating when I say that most of the t-shirts I own now are from IntoTheAM. This one here, uh, with that kind of vaguely Cthulhu looking, is their Cosmic Clash shirt, which is a part of their new line that you can see kind of scrolling through. And if you decide you want to get some of these, the link is down below in the bio to IntoTheAM.com, and you can gain an additional 10% off by using my promo code THRABENU. So this is Mark's Spicy Shadow deck list. And uh, Mark, I believe you run a club for high schoolers. So hello, everyone. May you reanimate your trolls on turn one. I guess on turn two on this deck. No dark ritual. So most of what you see here is relatively common in Legacy. We have the Stalactite Stalkers as an alternative early threat. This is something that will technically be able to get got by a Bowmaster, but only for a narrow window before this starts scaling up. So we have our griefs, our reanimates, our shock lands in order to control our life total. Uh, you'll notice that we are not on the full four watery graves here. Like we have limb duels vault as this pseudo combo finish. So we don't necessarily have to just go out on maxing out on watery grave here. Otherwise, I'd say most of the main deck is normal. And I think we just have good solid flex slots in the in the sideboard here. We have a couple of generic answers in the form of Brazen Borrower, and otherwise we just have an assortment of like extra threats slash hate cards and a handful of haymakers or situational removal spells for various matchups. Uh, this sideboard feels very clean and I like it a lot, and we probably don't have to worry about some of the negative synergy between things like Null Rod and Spellbomb. So with that being said, let's see how this spicy shadow list performs. And if you find yourself needing some cards, please check out toamagic.com. That is Tales of Adventure. I know it can be really frustrating when you are, tr are trying to order cards and you have to get them in a billion envelopes. TOA has a ton of cards in stock, 99% of all the standard cards if you're playing standard, and they have tons of duels and power and all the high-end legacy stuff that you would need as well. Plus, you get everything in one envelope from one place with free shipping. Sounds good. With that being said, let's go cast Limb Duel's Vault. 
So I'm not the happiest with this hand, but I think this hand is improved by enough draw steps that I just keep this one. I think I'll shock. And we're just going to immediately get a threat down. We have Wasteland and Daze and a free removal spell to back this up. I think this is enough to make this hand keepable if the Stalactite Stalker is answered. I just reanimate it. It's pretty hard to quickly answer it through both Days and Wasteland. But I don't know that I have enough disruption for something like an opposing combo deck. Ooh, this is a tough turn now. So I can either troll plus reanimate, or I can just take the Wasteland. I like that the Wasteland scales this up. I think I'm going to go that route. A Stifle specifically is a little awkward right here. Cycling Lorien Revealed, Finding Underground Sea, so we might be playing against something like Bug Beans. So this scales up. I've got end of turn Troll Cycle into a Reanimate. I am going to go ahead and cycle this now. There's some merit to waiting because it puts a permanent into the graveyard to scale this up. I think I just want to play around an opposing days right now. 15. And we'll go for the reanimate. I can back this up with double days. It's kind of awkward if I have to double days. I think this is enough power that I do try to treat days as my force of will here. I'm going to go ahead and bounce the underground seat. Then my opponent will obviously fetch. My opponent will pay. And then I am going to go ahead and daze this again. This is me going all in. I think that's fine. I don't want to give my opponent time here. Like I just want my opponent dead in two turns. I don't want them to have time to set up like beans or like domain cards or whatever. Yeah. Force of Will is almost good. Here's nine of that damage. My opponent is at four. I think I'm going to shock myself at least one more time. This doesn't scale up this turn, unfortunately. But there's that fifth color. A Scion of Draco. Sure. Note that that is a snuff outable creature right now. It doesn't have the uh, various abilities. I turn on Force of Negation if I go to my own turn, but I think I value the opportunity to draw a blue card and just 100% end this game. Swords. I mean, that's happening. Uh, this is sort of an awkward assortment of cards here. This is Menace. This doesn't even block. Do I even remove this? I guess it's awkward if my opponent hard casts a Leyline uh, ley of the Guild Pact, and then this gets Lifelink. All right, I guess I'm killing it. I'm going to pay the life. I want to get back into Death's Shadow range. Cool. Puts my opponent to one. Fetch lands are off. I kind of awkwardly have half of two different like pieces of disruption. So I fully expect my stalker to just eat like a sword to plowshares here or get blocked by a bowmasters or something that buys my opponent a turn. Yep. Now this is this is the awkwardness here. I'm one land away from hard casting a grief, but like it's it's very possible that I lose this game from here, despite like having a currently commanding position. Bowmasters is a thing that exists. I still think I am just going to cast this card because, like, giving my opponent less time to find protection is so incredibly strong. Nice. We're going to put back one and two. Play this. We now have Orcish Bowmasters with Force of Will back up, which is about the best possible thing that I could ask for here. I think we were on track to win that game most of the time, but I don't think... We win that game that quickly on average. I think that was above average. So I don't particularly like my counter spells here. I think I would like more bodies. Probably even this one, despite the fact that like it's not great versus Bowmasters. I probably bring this in in respect of Bowmasters. Yeah, I, I think we're going threat dense and playing a few more answers for Bowmasters. And then I'm not sure what to do with the last two slots. Like, Spellbomb is kind of mid. It's sort of an awkward two-mana cantrip that brings some value with it. 
I maybe just play a couple of Force of Wills begrudgingly, but like this deck is very black. Like, especially if I go down this number of cards. Maybe Days is better. Days on the draw is awkward though. A Force of Negation as a hard castable thing? Eh. I'm not sure what my sideboard mapping here is supposed to be. Miser's Days for good luck. Don't have a starting mana source here, so like these trolls can't chain into each other. Uh, this is perfectly fine. I don't want this spellbomb this early in this game, so that one's gonna go. All right, the ley line is starting in play this time, and this is the thing that really pushes uh, Scion of Draco into the realm of playability. Stalactite Stalker. So I think I am just interested in Sorcery Speed Brainstorm. Like, I already know the sort of stuff that I'm looking for, and then I'm gonna use a troll to shuffle. Limdul's Vault is currently slow, and I have plenty of other stuff to do with my mana. I'm gonna put a Merktide Regent on top. Maybe I'll redraw it. I'm probably not going to do that. Okay, looks like we're not just gonna see immediate Scion of Draco, uh, which would put my opponent in the seat of the aggressor. No immediate fetch for the Brainstorm. So, upkeep, we're gonna go ahead and cycle here. I think I do get the Watery Grave. It'll push his mid right now. I'm going to go ahead and shock in the Watery Grave. I think I'm just going to play this one out into a removal spell first, rather than trying to immediately go for reanimate on troll. I would much rather a Swords or a Leyline Binding hit this than the troll. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Carpet of Flowers is annoying. That is a lot of bonus mana for my opponent. And this is probably not going anywhere. The Brazen Borrower has other stuff to do in this matchup. I am definitely afraid right now. Like, my opponent has more card draw, better fixing, and more mana than I do all at the same time. All right, there's the swords hitting the suboptimal threat, just like I wanted. Uh, we're going to ponder and ultimately reanimate this troll, I think. Another Brazen Borrower? I don't think so. Eh. Can't win them all here. I'm going to go ahead and shock and attempt the reanimate. Um, it's in play. I shouldn't necessarily count that for a lot. My opponent is going to have a lot of removal. And the things that aren't removal are either win conditions or things that dig towards removal. So solitude in particular is really scary right now. Yep. Like a solitude style card would just cantrip off up the beanstalk. Bowmasters? That's fine. I can just push that. I'll probably just push it on my own turn when my opponent does not have active blue mana, though. My life total's too high right now for this Death's Shadow, unfortunately. I think I'm fine fighting over the Bowmaster before my opponent untaps and has more looks at cards like Force of Will that would protect it. And then I'm just going to pass the turn. It's currently unclear to me whether or not I am petty thefting one of these things out of play. I think for now I'm just going to take the one. Like, taking the damage is actively good for me in terms of the Death's Shadow. Seems like we're chilling. I think I'm just going to jam the threat. Oh, I don't have more Watery Graves. Okay. That changes my mental calculus a little bit. I'm used to having four of those. Uh, Merch is a really good draw. Opponents pausing at my beginning of combat, which probably indicates that they are thinking about whether or not they want to remove this. That said, I don't really think I get to wait another turn to play this Merktide Regent. I'm going to pay one extra mana here and leave a card in Graveyard for, for future Merktides, uh, which I don't actually have that many of. There's just one more. That's a lot of mana. Lorien Revealed is pretty scary right now. That's a fetch to clear. Second set of beans. Horrifying. Yeah. This is what this deck does. Uh, we are now very much in an uphill battle. Uh, yeah, those, despite costing two mana because of the ley line of the guild pact, those do trigger the up the bean stocks. But just like that, my opponent has removed one of my threats, drawn four cards, and this says each creature you control has Vigilance if it's white, Hexproof if it's blue, so on and so forth. Uh, I guess don't, uh, don't Bowmaster me. I, I think I'm just putting back two lands and shuffling those away with Ponder. I guess I should also attack. 
Uh, wait, no, you have all the keywords. Yeah, you're innately flying. I guess I'm not attacking first. We continue on. Uh, nope. Grief is not particularly strong here. None of my cards are particularly strong here. This this might be the point where I just like concede and don't show my opponent more cards. I'm not going to do that yet because like if I vomit multiple large death shadows into play, like I could pivot this game back. But death shadow is just like notoriously bad versus white decks because the swords to plowshares that remove some other card sometimes kill death's shadow or keeps you from playing the Death's Shadow in the first place. Oh, that's a lot of white mana. Do you have a Triumph? Oh, <laughs> sure. No, that's that's fine. Okay. I, I've seen enough here. Um, so we're obviously not great versus this giant pile of enchantments and white removal. There's not too much that I can do to adjust. I can bring some counter spells back in. I think I do need the threat density. I could do something like Hydroblast for the Ley Lines specifically, but this is a pretty narrow card. Ugh. I don't know, maybe when I'm on the play I do all of these dazes. I don't particularly think Spellbomb is slow. Or, or is good, rather. I think it is slow. I could go down some Limb Dual Vaults. That's also slow. Am I supposed to do a little more proactive protection when I'm on the play? Maybe it's possible I have too much removal. Snuff out's not the greatest. It doesn't hit Bowmasters. It does hit a Scion, though. And, well, usually hits a Scion, unless they also have the Ley Line. No. Uh, six is fine. I'm probably going to use an actual Cantrip on turn one and then Cycle Troll into Reanimate on turn two. I'm going to get rid of a Snuff out here. And keep a Merc Tide. We're playing Ponder mostly to find stuff to throw into the graveyard. Like, we want to turn this on. Uh, yeah, I'll take a Douthy Voidwalker. But then I'll probably upkeep Troll Cycle rather than just draw and play the land. I could just draw and play the land. Then I can Ponder and Reanimate. Or so no, that I'm still using this mana. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna troll cycle. We'll grab watery grave. Ah, uh, boy, that's an awkward card. So I always do this. I can grief pitch the Douthy Voidwalker and try to punch a hole so this goes further. Wow, this is awkward. Like this is a very reasonable threat to just follow up with next turn. Oh well, I think I just hope that I can Merc Tide in the not too distant future. I'm going to take Swords, obviously, and I think I am going to go for Reanimate the Troll and try to clock my opponent as quickly as possible. Every hit for 6 here is just massive. Some portion of the time my opponent, like, ponders into a Swords and removes this immediately, and, like, it would have been better to Grief because I get that value, but I think I don't want the game to go on. Like, I think I am fully trying to just, like, hit in for damage here. I assume my opponent makes triple blue here. Yep. Or rather double blue with Valk available. I wonder if they're supposed to brainstorm first so they can ponder shuffle. A uh, little hard to say without knowing what their draw step was, but this order feels awkward to me. So we've got a guaranteed six now. Second Merktide. I don't really want the second one. So it goes. Um... Four cards in Graveyard with the Ponder. Fetchland is a fifth card in Graveyard. That's probably fine. Gives my opponent one more mana for Carpet of Flowers, which is, like, very actively awkward. And, my gr and like, these next two draws aren't the best. I think I accept. I think I very awkwardly accept this. Again, I am trying to end this one ASAP. Oh, right, I'm fetching. JK, ignore some of what I just said. We Mark died. This is 12 theoretical damage of my opponent's 13 life. It is a little awkward if we, like, somehow put my opponent into Supreme Verdict range here. Terminus is on the table also as a way to clear out multiple things. Um, that's hopefully fine. Like, that's mana not spent on removal. Uh, yep. 
Now, this doesn't have all the fun abilities. It is currently a flyer, but that's it. So it doesn't block this well and does not block this at all. Oh, that's really good. Post combat? Probably post combat. Like, make my opponent fire off any spells that they're going to fire off. This is 6 damage, plus we take out a Scion. And I am going to, air quotes, wasteland them off of white. But it's not fully taking them off of white. Alright, no use for the floating mana. So this is it. My opponent has to answer both of these creatures. Which means either two spot removal spells, a spot removal spell, and a blocker, or a sweeper. Blue mana. It is very hard for Lorien Revealed to get there. Not impossible. But this now requires white mana plus removal spell plus solitude plus white card or something like that. Like it, it is a lot to ask for. That is not the correct uh, color of removal spells. That's insane though. Because that can produce white white. And does. And my opponent concedes. Uh, I was definitely sweating uh, both games there. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. So I have a really good six card hand here, and by that I mean my force of will is dead. I think I'm going to do something a little saucy and go grief, pitch the stalactite, stalker, and keep both reanimates. That way if I grief and take an opposing creature, I can reanimate that on turn two. I think that's the way that I want to play this one out, or I have two shots at reanimate if reanimate gets countered. Prismatic ending not great versus what I've got going on here. I probably take the Force of Will this time and the Brainstorm the second time and leave them with the ending. So let's go 18. Take another 4 off the old life total. Take the Brainstorm. My opponent currently has 5 cards in hand that don't do anything versus a 3 power attacker. My situation is fine. I wouldn't necessarily call it good. That is very interesting. But it's definitely awkward against the known days. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to handle this. I think this is staying as a blue card to pitch to Force of Will. Rather than something that I cast at end of turn. Alright, well I've kind of changed my mind now. We'll send it on in. Honestly, it still might be. Just a blue card to pitch to Force of Will, rather than pitching Force to Force. I do have to keep in mind that my opponent could, in theory, Prismatic Ending for X equals 3 and pay 4 mana into a Grief. I don't know that I'm casting this Ponder. I think this is just, I believe in Grief. Grief for President 2024. Uh, no plays yet. All the fetches? No, it's a Ponder. I think that's fine. I want to point the Force of Will at either removal spells, or I would probably force something like an Up the Beanstalk as well. That was no shuffle this time. Now we're seeing some movement. Uh, Brainstorm's fine. Holy Force of Will, Batman. Okay. Uh, that's seven. I, I think I'm continuing to pass the turn. Grief is probably a two-turn clock with double fetch land in play here. Two-turn clock confirmed. Two active removal spells here. Mystic Sanctuary, sure. So if my opponent is just straight just guy, they don't have the fourth color for Prismatic Ending. My opponent probably would have fetched differently if this was a an actual like five color control deck list. They're grabbing Ponder. Antrips start to get scary for my opponent because of Bowmasters. This is slightly annoying, but not an actual problem. Just mostly makes my opponent's days better. Why are we pondering after playing Wasteland, though? And not leaving Fetchland options open for Ponder? Like, I'm clearly not casting spells. Could be something weird like Force of Negation plus playing around days, but... I counter this. Whatever it is, I'm countering it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get to let my opponent do that here. We're gonna Force of Will. 
pitching a Limb Duels Vault. And that just resolves. I get to hit my opponent down to two. I have one, maybe two Force of Wills available. My opponent's at two. The little old grief that could. Uh, that is a grief that went all the way and did the full 20. Well, minus a couple of, like, fetch lands and uh, Force of Will. Just got control. I don't hate increasing my threat density here. I don't hate Hydroblast for fourth Air Lingas, as that card is really powerful and could also hit some other things like Red Elemental Blasts or Lightning Bolts or whatever. Brazen Borrower is an okay additional threat. Bellbomb has some text. I don't know that I'm excited about it. If opponent is on Triumph, this card matters a lot. Otherwise, this card's pretty bad. If, like, the finishers are, say, 4th Aerolingas and Comet, I've got some Fatal Pushes, right? No, my Fatal Pushes are in the sideboard to start with. My Force of Wills were really good that game, but I think they were partially good because my opponent just, like, kept an opener that got obliterated by Grief Reanimate Grief and never drew out of it. I don't think I should expect my Force of Wills to be that good on average. I'm thinking about boarding out some number of counter spells here. Like, I'm totally into these six, I think. I think that's getting rid of days when I'm on the draw. And then probably doing this. Like, I could do this over one force. I think I'm okay with a couple forces. I don't know exactly how to evaluate Limb Duel's Vault here. Uh, my opening hand is fine. Like, I've got Grief Reanimate Grief again as an option, or I can reanimate a troll. I think I need my next draw step to inform my decision here, though. Um, I can also just, like, delay a turn and Wasteland a Tundra and, like, be perfectly happy with that. Which I think is what I'm going to do. Not really expecting Stifle from my opponent. But, like, this gives me another turn to kind of help me inform my decisions about what to do with the the black cards over here Ooh, it's a drc huh enough out has real text against that i think i just remove this immediately so that my opponent does not have a persistent source of card selection off of repeated surveils well shock yeah let's let's start here okay no counter spell I think this is Grief Pitch Troll now and reanimate and try to take like two removal spells out of my opponent's hand. Oh, baby. Yeah, so we'll take fourth Air Lingas. I will reanimate my Grief. Take my opponent's Lightning Bolt. My opponent is left with a couple of Wastelands. But if they're Wastelanding me rather than advancing their board, that is probably very good for me on average. Uh, yeah, they recognize that and don't attempt to Wasteland me. Ooh, that's also a good draw. Uh, let's start with my Lightning Bolt worth of damage off the attack. There's only two in here right now. I think I'm just going to Dow the immediately. I think this is enough damage to myself where I don't shock further. I think I'm into Dow the rather than the Merc Tide. It's a little hard to tell. Um, I'm going to bash in for the six. My opponent is at nine. I'm pretty unlikely to have to worry about something like Supreme Verdict. Uh, it's possible. It's a little tough. A shadow. I am into this, like, stream of threats here. I think I'm going to take the shadow now. I think it's big enough. Ponder, reanimate, snuff out. And then we'll pull some random lands out. Yeah, uh, we just completely overpower our opponent here, and we're 2-0. All right. I have kind of a mediocre hand. My opponent has mulligan to 5. We're hoping they're not playing something crazy fast like Oops All Spells. But they are playing something pretty fast. So this is likely to be a, like, the one ring Voltaic key manifold key combo deck of some kind. Uh, so this turn is awkward. It's awkward because conceptually, the thing that I want to do as fast as possible is put this into play. But this is potentially pretty damning. I think I am going to try to high roll here and try to find Force of Will. And just do what I can to actually counter something that comes down. 
Uh, Troll's not bad. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm going to take the one random shot at Force of Will. I do miss. I do not regret my line at all. Because Grief is also an incredible hit here. We've got blue mana. Yeah, here it is. And this is why we want Bowmaster's ASAP, which is why I didn't Wasteland on turn one. Force of Will and Grief are still the cards that I am hoping for the most here. Uh, I guess Force of Will. Uh, Grief's not great immediately. I think I will shock. And we'll go to my opponent's turn. They lose a life. And then when they tap the one ring, I'll go in on Orcish Bowmasters. Uh, please don't force me. Nice. So we're going to get a lot of triggers and a relatively big orc here. Now my opponent can like do some very broken things here. <laughs> oh, that's rough. So my opponent gets their own bowmaster and pings my bowmaster. I will reanimate their bowmaster though, and then I will do filthy, disgusting things. Frankly, things that are illegal in some states. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to reanimate my bowmaster. Oh no, not a force of will. What the fuck is this? When it enters the battlefield, investigate. Solve if you control three or more artifacts. To solve, sacrifice it. Put four plus one plus one counters on target non-creature artifact. It's a bird. Sure. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, we're going to reanimate this. We're going to ping this. That was my intention to then reanimate the Phyrexian Metamorph, but... We don't get to do that this time. My opponent takes the block, obviously. And then I will wasteland the shit out of this ancient tomb, despite the fact that, like, the two life is relevant. Opponent's at seven. Mana's tight. Card draw's risky. I have very close to lethal on board. And with this three pings at face, this is theoretical lethal. My opponent's at four. They could play something like a new copy of the one ring to buy a turn. But they can't untap the ring and then draw four anymore. That doesn't get them to where they need to go. I would really like to win game one here. This matchup feels scary. A dismember, maybe? Oh, it's another metamorph, sure. So my opponent gets a new bowmaster. They've got two chumps on this. My cantrips are currently awkward. If this is jump blocking anyway, I don't lose too much by playing my cantrips. Like, I can draw three cards. This turns into a 4-4. It still jump blocks the same. Yeah, I, I think we're just firing this off into the Bowmasters. These cards suck. <laughs> I'm going to put back double snuff out here. Oh, also, like, none of this is relevant. My opponent just dies to their own copy of the One Ring. Like, why am I continuing to play? Yeah. yeah so let's just, like, Watery Grave. Shock that in. Play a Stalactite Stalker. I can just pass the turn, and then they die to the One Ring. So, yeah, like, they draw a bunch of cards. Ooh, it is a stifle. Okay. Copy artifact. Sure. That copies the one ring, so that does give my opponent the protection from everything. Sure. They're going to need another stifle or they die to this. Is grief incorrect? A little weird. It's probably correct. Yeah, it's probably correct. Oh, fuck. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to say that I did that to scale up Stalactite Stalker. Why didn't you hard cast it then? Shut up. Oh, uh, sure. My opponent draws a bunch of cards. They need to produce another body or a new copy of the One Ring. Let's see what they can do. Sure. Petal. Copy artifact is another copy of the One Ring. Um, why is my opponent playing Ancient Tomb? They are at two life. Or I guess it works this turn, right? Yeah, it works this turn. Banking some mana for the future. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to just remove this Bowmaster. Or if I want a Menace Creature. I think I want a Menace Creature right now. I think I'm going to Ponder. Like, I think that's fine. Death Shadow is interesting. Wasteland is interesting. The Wasteland is, like, less interesting because, like, it doesn't, in theory, tap for mana. I, I think I'm just going to take the Death Shadow and shuffle the rest. My opponent presumably pings me for one. Okay, they're going for this. Uh, that's fine. I don't have another watery grave. That's really annoying. I kept a 1-1. One, one. Oh well. I do descend. So my opponent's ancient tomb is currently off. They have four mana. They could cast another ring. 
Uh, okay. Once, yeah. <laughs> sure. All right. I'm not even mad. All right. I maybe got a little sloppy when I thought I had this game locked up. Not having more watery graves is rough. Null rod in. Force of negation in. Brazen borrower in. Snuff outs are not particularly good here. Those can go. Limb Duel's Vault, most interesting thing here is it pitches to both Grief and Force of Will while also pitching to Force of Negation. It feels incredibly slow in this matchup. I think it's got to go. Like, I think I need these six cards. And this feels like the most cuttable thing. And then maybe I cut, like, one Death's Shadow. Uh, I am bringing in a couple more threats. All right, so this is turn one Troll, turn two Reanimate it. That's not what I want to do in the matchup. It's a very fast clock. I would much prefer to disrupt my opponent about twice. I think I'm just going to mulligan this. Ah, uh, how many lands? 18? 17? So 16 remain in deck. Believe? Believe with double force of will. Buy me time to this. Thanks, I hate it. All right. Sure. Opponent's chilling. I have a land on top. Nope. I kept this hand fully expecting that it does not go well, like in the short term, but that I have a pretty decent chance of winning in the medium turn. Um, like, it matters, but I don't think I'm countering that. Nice. Yeah, I, I think I just need this to back up the Null Rod and then stop the first major haymaker that my opponent plays and then i think i just try to zero to 20 my opponent with brazen borrower what my opponent doing uh yeah that resolves uh this is fine so i will potentially like end of my opponent's turn just bounce the chalice out of play and then use that to cast a cantrip or two uh so this is the plan so they sacrifice this and then go to what a four mana artifact does that matter be like metamorph that doesn't matter the one ring that doesn't matter i think i'll just hard cast a daze on this and not bounce the chalice immediately another land drop is great yeah if i just naturally hit that um that's annoying i just cast brazen borrower though and then just hold up three mana for force of will for the rest of the game okay shock this is fine this is just like ultimate patience in figuring out what you actually need to answer. I don't know my opponent's deck list well enough to know whether or not I had to daze this. It seemed like a low opportunity cost thing to do, though. I will shock for that. I'll probably shock for that still. It puts me in range of one Emrakul attack, but uh, we're hoping to prevent that sort of thing anyway. Like, if the Emrakul attack goes in, I, I think I just die. I'm playing land drops because if I get to six mana, I can double force of will in one turn cycle. Grief is interesting. My opponent goes to 11. Their bottleneck is mana. So as soon as they rip a land, they probably have things to play for multiple turns. I can turn this into a two turn clock if I am willing to drop force of will. I don't think that's correct. The third basic island is really annoying. That's a metamorph. That's going to go on a Brazen Borrower and give my opponent a blocker. This is not a must counter spell, but it's probably annoying enough that I just force it anyway. Fantastic. Now if I draw a land, I can Grief while still holding up. Ooh, that's kind of nice for Ottawara type situations. Yeah, grab an Underground Sea. Null Rod while holding up 3 mana for Force of Will. Opponent's on a two-turn clock, and if I Force of Will this turn, I can Grief next turn to back up what I'm doing. Sure, sure. The so same as last turn, like, this isn't that good. It is just a blocker for Brazen Borrower, but, like, this is my clock. I believe that I am comfortable Force of Willing this, and then playing Grief while also Wastelanding my opponent off of that city. I think that's fine. Death Shadow, obviously not the best draw here. I'll now Grief. So the Emrakul is scarier than the Show and Tell. 
I believe. The show and tell putting in the one ring doesn't give protection. I guess this shuffles back in and gives my opponent another luck. My opponent has more big dumb artifacts they can put in play, though. I, I am going to... Uh, eh? Three of these remaining. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, let's take that. Then wasteland this. Two lethal threats in play. Awkward null rod hand gets there. I could play another threat. My death shadows seem kind of bad here. My opponent's not really pressuring my life total. I guess Stealthy Void Walker is theoretically capable of taking an Emrakul and putting it under. That's something. Um, again, I don't think Troll Reanimate is where I want to be. I think I want some degree of disruption here. And a Bowmasters is some degree of disruption, as is Double Wasteland. I honestly probably keep Double Wasteland here and pitch Troll, despite the fact that I have Reanimate, because reanimating Bowmasters or reanimating uh, Metamorph is just so much more important than the Troll in the matchup. My opponent's on the play. They can come out more explosively than I can. Basic Island here, um, obviously annoying given my game plan. I will be pondering for Disruption on turn one. Can't be Force of Will. We're looking for like Daze, Null Rod, that sort of stuff. Absolutely wild. My Bowmaster smiles with delight. Oh yeah, that's fine. I don't have any counter spells right now. I want to save this for Brainstorm later, despite the fact that like my opponent might end up with the Bowmasters immediately. So I think I have to show this land here. So I'll ping my opponent. And uh, we'll see who ends up winning the Orcish Bowmaster War that the rest of this game is probably going to devolve into. Nope. This is the point where I wish I had the troll. And it's currently very bad. Brainstorm hopefully fixes that. My opponent doesn't have a lot of gas. So this is a massive window. Um, go back Wasteland Wasteland. That's just not what this game is about right now. I'm going to go ahead and fetch. I'll just take an underground C this time. Let's ponder. Uh, the troll's fine. Troll reanimate is something to do. I have days for a four drop that my opponent plays, and then I have reanimate troll to speed up my clock. Um, that does mean that I drop reanimate on bowmaster or metamorph. We dodge it for this turn at least. And I can use my draw step to inform whether or not I'm going for reanimate on troll. Seems like yes now. So this is 14. I make a land drop. I go for the reanimate while still having force of will available for my opponent's turn. I have my opponent on a two turn clock. Oh, right. I don't have this available. Multiple defense grids. Yep. Those do stack. I've already shuffled away, you wasteland. So my force of will costs nine if I pitch cast it. Probably not happening. Let's see what my opponent can do. Nada. They could chain a vapor a troll out of play. But then I just force of will that. Hard cast. Uh, yeah, my opponent is just dead and we're three and oh. All right, I'm very likely playing against Dredge here. I am on the draw. My reanimates are sort of interesting. I think I need to be faster than this. I think I need to interact more heavily. Force of Will is a great start. I'm going to keep this and pitch one Limb Duels Vault. I don't have main deck Graveyard Hate that I can use Limb Duels Vault to find. Uh, it's round four and we're winning, but we have not cast this card yet. It's not like I'm sideboarding it out every round. I'm sideboarding it out sometimes. Nope. We hope that this buys some time. Um, I am not confident here. I don't think I am shocking immediately. I think I count on my opponent to deal some amount of damage to me. I'd like to interact further. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not the best. I can take it so that my opponent can only do this once. All right. The Cephalid Colosseum in the not too distant future is scary. We're a few turns away from that. It's three in graveyard. It could happen next turn. I think I'm hoping to ponder between ponder and draw step, hit a land and another cantrip, and then play a giant Merktide Regent. That's not the Cephalid Coliseum. 
Anger in the yard. LED resolves while my opponent is pretty sure I don't have counter magic. I'm looking to ponder for a land drop. I'm going to say no to that and try to randomly hit. Negative. Uh, hand has fallen apart. I think we lose. My opponent, whenever they want, can junk LED to Grave Troll. So I think I am one spell like this away from destruction. Yeah. F6. Double Narc Amoeba. My opponent now gets to Cephalid Coliseum for three more draws. I don't think this one is going to be worth playing anymore once, like, Looting and Ox are in Graveyard. I have very little Graveyard hate in this deck. So I have two Douthies, one Spellbomb. I don't really have enough counter magic for this matchup, or enough Graveyard hate, even counting cantrips. So Snuff Out's pretty bad as a whole. I probably cut some number of threats. I think I keep Limb Duel's Vault to find these three cards. I need three cuts. Death Shadows probably just get chumped blocked in this matchup. I don't have ways to give them Trample. Yeah, these Otherworldly Gaze dredge decks tend to eat their blue decks alive. So I can Grief as free Disruption and blow up a land, but the hand isn't really going anywhere. I don't think I have a plan. This doesn't quite have a plan, but probably top decks its way into a plan. I think I'm going to keep one days and keep multiple cantrips. A grief pitch the troll. Get a feel for what's happening over there. Uh, Ellie is a pain. That does not get dazed. All right, I'll take one of those. This goes down. I'll now ponder. No. Wasteland. We'll see how conservative my opponent is with the LED. Not. Uh, fuck. So the graveyard nonsense gets to get started. I can at least wasteland this. That gives me something to do. Uh, that's a terrible draw. Unclear how good actually wastelanding my opponent is versus trying to find graveyard hate and doing something more proactive. Let's, I guess... Ish for Douthy Voidwalker. That's. I just have one shadow, right? I just have one shadow, so I'm gonna get Underground Sea. Let's go for the Ponder. I can reanimate a Grief. The Limb Duel's Vault is slow. It is a guaranteed way to find Douthy Voidwalker or Spellbomb, though. I think I'm going to accept that and leave that on top of my library. So I can next turn. Go vault into spell bomb, play spell bomb, crack spell bomb. And we'll see how bad this turn is. Don't have a lot of agency. The daze is just like not stopped by this stuff. All right. I will pay the life. I will pay the life. I will pay the life. Fuck, this doesn't draw the card. Oh, I messed that up. Um, this is fine. I'm used to playing this end stuff. Mess that up. Bury this. Bury this. And go yah, yah, yah. Despite the awkwardness, I think I do do that. Makes this better. On Faithless Looting. Narc Amoeba is found. Let's see what my opponent does here. They've got LED and can go all in. They might think that I have a Spellbomb type card on top of my library, in which case they don't go all in. Oh, nope. They're going. So there are Cabal Therapy and friends available and Poxwalkers and stuff. My Delthy Voidwalker just like might not be good enough here. I think I'm just going to daze this so things don't get worse. Otherwise I'm dazing like a Cabal Therapy in a minute. Yeah, I think I'm just going to daze that. So the Poxwalker Cabal Therapy interaction is sweet where you sacrifice the Poxwalkers to the Cabal Therapy and you just get it back immediately. Dark Ritual is a weird name. All right, so I have to beat this onboard stuff plus whatever Icarid makes happen. Uh, there's currently not black creatures in Graveyard, but like this is just eight damage as is. Sure. Yeah, my opponent just ships it all this way. I need to find creatures that help me stabilize this board, and I kind of need to draw them naturally. 
uh, turning this into Stinkweed Imp doesn't really get me to where I need to go. I want to ponder because I know I want to shuffle these top cards. Blooded Strand. I can now Brainstorm. And play 2-2 two, two Stalactite Stalker. Trade with one of these. 3, 4, 5, take 6. Kill one thing. Give my opponent more tokens. Eh, this seems close enough to Lost that I'm just going to throw in the towel. GG's. Alright, I have a medium-looking opening hand here. Where, like, I can maybe set up a Death Shadow, but it is, like, literally a maybe. I don't have Counter Magic. I don't have an early threat. I don't have guaranteed disruption. I think I'm going to go Reluctant Keep. Um, this this is going to be a high-variance hand, depending on what my opponent is playing. Stalactite Stalker? I don't know that I want both Stalactite Stalker and a land. Bowmasters is a much better draw. All right. Not your Taxes. It's maybe some sort of prison deck list. I could wasteland this. I don't know that I am excited about doing that. I think I'm just going to Bowmasters and pass. Sure. Underground Sea. Underground Sea plus Ghost Quarter is weird. Well, twist my arm. Uh, we're in play. We could get dismembered. We don't get dismembered. It's pretty rare that I'm just fully confused what my opponent is doing. It's like we're getting long game signs from this, like Wasteland number five signs from this, or like Loam signs. Wastelanding right now is weird into the open ghost quarter. All right. Is this a, a Limb Duels Vault game, finally? My opponent's at 15. I'm going to pass the turn. Sure. We are chilling. All right. 15. Tapping this Wasteland to Troll Cycle and hitting my next land drop allows my opponent to Ghost Quarter this. It also Ghost Quarter caused me to shuffle off the Limb Duels Vault. I think I'm okay with that. Like, that would cause them to go down cards. A Mark Tide, one, two, three, potentially four, five. Grief. I'm gonna pay life. I think this is medium. I'm gonna pay life. Like I have a Death Shadow in hand, so like being a little aggressive with the paying is fine. There's a lot of Death's Shadow. I think I'm gonna go deeper. I think I like this. Like do something like yeah. Yaw, 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 yaw. And then see if they ghost quarter me to force a shuffle. They do. I think I am fine with. I'll immediately wasteland my opponent. And we'll see if they like Bowmaster or something. And I'll float this mana. Oh, no basics, right. I will swamp cycle. Picking up the other watery grave. Uh, that's annoying. The snuff out doesn't have a legal target, but it's fine. Really? Yeah. Deck needs more fucking watery graves. Like, desperately. Like, I don't think I've attacked with a Death's Shadow this league, and it's round five. I've drawn a Wasteland. Apologies if you saw some random stuff on screen. I got a message from my previous opponent who wanted to ask something. I think I'm going to go ahead and attack my 2-2 two -two into these. My opponent does not trade. I'm going to go ahead and wasteland them. I don't think I show the shadow yet. I think I let my opponent attack me. Fantastic. Shadow gets bigger. Oh, that's a hell of a draw. Actually, it's not that great. There's two in there. I still probably play it as the flyer that is not chump blockable. We'll eat those and then just take some lands out of my graveyard. Sort of interestingly, this also gives me the line of snuff out on my own Merkdide Regent as something that I might reasonably do. I don't really want to do that, but I might do that. Okay, there is a loam. We kind of figured out what's going on. I think I just Bowmaster. Like, troll is reasonable, but I think if I reanimate the troll... There's too many theoretical worlds where my opponent 
can just spin the game. I imagine my opponent takes a chump here. Yep. They are at six, which means they can't fetch or they die. Play a relatively small death's shadow here. Force a will pitching Merktide. Uh, they are dead on board to Merktide now. And I imagine it's pretty hard for them to kill a Merktide off of one mana. It would have to be like a murderous cut. All right, uh, we got that one for free. That was a weird game. The random ghost quarter interacting with Limb Duel's vault was very strange. I kind of hate my mana base. Like, only two watery graves plus no basic is very weird. So my opponent has Merc Tides, meaning Snuff Out has some text. I think against known ghost quarter, loam shenanigans, I want this out. I think I want Douthy Voidwalkers as both an additional threat and some form of graveyard hate. I want more respect for Merktide. I will play a card that respects the graveyard. Not like too excited about this stuff. I'm not the most into my dazes on the draw. Yeah, Ghost Quarter in particular is kind of rough here. I also don't know that I want to just physically go down the card for selection that does not replace itself here. Do I want Borrower over some dazes? That's probably fine. I think I want more dazes if we go to a game three and I'm on the play. This is a medium looking opening hand that I think I will keep. I would love to find a reanimate with this. No reanimate, but that's not a bad draw. That means I don't get wastelanded immediately on turn one. Although maybe I play this anyway because I would like to save the fetch land for later. Yeah, makes sense. You have a sweet surveil land, negative. Just cycle, finding a C. Ponder before my Bowmasters comes down. And a second one. That was a very fast shuffle. Uh, we're going to swap cycle for a watery grave. Then we'll see what we draw. Pretty mid power level card. I can Douthy Voidwalker here to make future Merktides less juicy, or I can just jam the Bowmasters. I think I'm going to jam Douthy. I don't think I am into giving up either Douthy or Bowmasters to pitch cast a grief. I think I am on the plan of hard casting that a little bit later. Currently unsure which one of my blue cards is worse. Beans. I would not like my opponent to have beans. I think the Merktide region is currently a worse card, but I only have two of them. They're not super replaceable. I don't really want to brazen borrower this. I think I'm gonna give up two cards to stop beans, or at least try to. Yeah, I, I would force that back as well. But I do have a Force of Will under Douthy Voidwalker now. Murderous Cut is brutal. Yeah, that's uh, obviously very good. Another Bowmasters is great. Merktide would be very small right now. I don't think I am Merktiding. I think I am just going to play this out at sorcery speed to have the highest percentage chance of resolving it immediately. And then if my opponent Bowmasters again, like if my opponent Bowmasters my Bowmasters, I can Bowmasters their Bowmasters, and then, you know, we'll, you know, have our Bowmasters kiss or whatever. Fuck, that's so good. A legit go for the throat. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. This is much less scary for me than go for the throat and double wasteland me. Like I'm still playing magic as of right now. Fatal push is very bad at the moment. All right. Shock. I only have one incident sorcery for Merktide Regent. I think my plan right now, since I'm basically never hard casting this grief, is just use it to take what's left and hope that I draw a new land to Merktide. Ooh, uh, you don't get a Merktide. We'll give you the Brainstorm. Then we'll grow our orc. Pings our opponent for one. Attacks for two. The Brainstorm's not super castable here. I think cycling the Spell Bomb is perfectly fine. Ah, oh, that is a heartbreaking top deck. I think we're done, folks. I, I don't think I come back from this. I can top deck a land right here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and attack for my two, and then really hope that I get to cast Merktide Regent. My opponent may or may not crack their spell bomb here. 
Oh, fuck yeah, they didn't. That's so good. I needed that. Force of Will is the only relevant thing here. I'll leave my creatures in Graveyard for Reanimate. I've got six power in play. That's a two-turn clock. I'm very lucky that my opponent did not crack their spell bomb. I am unfortunately unlucky that they drew the Dismember. And now they're going to nuke my Graveyard. I can still reanimate a Murktide from my opponent's Graveyard. That's not a reasonable top deck here. I'm just going to hold that in hand. Or in case my opponent is playing some sort of Thoughtseize type card. It's Bluffs Bowmasters as well, which is a horrifying card. Fuck. I guess like this is another land. I guess it's fine. Life from the Loam starts getting scary. This is a three turn clock. Uh, yeah, that's reasonable. Oh, that's a second brainstorm. You got it. That's so bad. I don't know how many fetchables I have left in my deck without looking, but I don't have many. Because I think I've used both Watery Graves and two Underground Seas. Yeah. Flash creatures like Bowmasters are very scary right now. God damn it. Good game, well played. No land drop, which is nice, but that plus three life is such an incredible amount of advantage right now. Uh, this is great. Why aren't there more fucking Watery Graves in my deck? Mark? Where are my Watery Graves, Mark? Uh, this stings a little bit, but I think I've got to do this. I can't beat that Uro. Also, I really hope there's one more Underground Sea in this deck. Should have checked that. God damn it. I can't cycle this immediately off this land because there's not enough fetchables in my deck. Fuck. The play is to keep Death's Shadow even though it's not particularly good. All right. I think I am gambling here. Or I, I think I am not gambling here and I take out the Uro. Like, I can maybe try to get the card out of this, but I just instantly lose the game some portion of the time to my opponent having a land drop. I, I think I've just got to count on getting a little lucky here. Uh, grief is never castable. I basically lose the game on the spot to this. Not literally, but the Bowmaster token trading for this orc means that the board is clear. While I don't have a threat or the ability to top deck lands to get me to grief. Sure. Yeah, we, we just have to get lucky. Even if I had a, like 1-1 one, one shadow here or a 2-2 two, two shadow here, it's not the best. I think I have to just do this. My situation is very dire. My opponent has cleared their, or I cleared their graveyard, so now the reanimates aren't good. I'm keeping this. So I go no shuffle. I take one. I think I push this now with the intention of reanimating it next turn. And then that can take out this orc as well. Sure. I'll take one. I'm still good with drawing reanimate. Hardcast force of will. Double cantripping is horrifying. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're going in. Gotta hope for the best. Fuck. Yeah. I don't think I can, like, sit here, wait for another turn to draw the other reanimate grief first, and then do this. I think that extra turn is just horrifying. Um, I'm fine drawing the reanimate and trying again. Well, let's do it. Force a will again. Draw two more cards. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, redraws another force of will, so my next top deck doesn't matter. Okay. You know, at this point, I can see the writing on the wall. Oh, we get to play another game, though. Yeah, only five fetchables in this deck is rough. And only two watery graves to enable the shadows also bad. I can do brazen bar I can keep brazen borrower in to respect Uro as a way to bounce that out of play. I can just play some more early game counter spells and go like negative two snuff out, negative two brazen borrower, get worse at answering Uro specifically, and be better at just protecting an early way to win and keep fatal pushes. Um, this is awkward. Like, specifically with two Watery Graves into the deck, in the deck, I can easily deal six damage to myself. This isn't live. Like, Bowmasters is good. I don't think there's enough gas here. I, I think I have to ship this. Well, I've got some protection. I am not excited about this, though. I think I just do this, getting rid of the grief. 
And uh, we're largely counting on this little boy right here to do work. We're going to go ahead and shock and hope I don't get wastelanded on turn one. I think I just have to get this scaling up. I want this scaled up before Bowmaster can come out. Dazing something this turn so I could replay Watery Grave is kind of cool. Uh, you can have that. I have bigger fish to fry. I can now cycle Troll to put a permanent into my graveyard for this. And then make my next land drop, which will obviously be another Watery Grave. Surgical on Polluted Delta. That seems incredibly aggressive. I don't think I like that play. Uh, this might be a desperation play in some capacity. Watery Grave. Do this. Shock. I'm at 15. I can grief if I want. The Death Shadow is so effing bad without another Watery Grave. Even if I daze, that's just 13. I think this is fine. I could wait one turn to potentially scale this up one more time, but I, I think I am now trying to go all the way with this Stalactite Stalker. Stalker. Gah! So I take Murderous Cut and make my opponent pay some amount of life with Dismember. Uh, my opponent's hand is very good, though. Yeah. Yeah, we were hoping to see one removal spell over there, which is not what happened. Yep. So my opponent is going to do the four life dismember so that I can't daze. So this requires my force of will. Did, did you just top deck a fatal push beyond this? Okay, that's fine. So this is the little 3-3 three, three menace that could. Shadow is not online. <laughs> I think this is fine. Bowmasters is really quite good against known Brainstorm and Uro. I think I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. No shuffle. Play this. I think because of like potential other copies of Murderous Cut, I just do this now. This also gives me... Uh, what is it? Uh, descend. Or I descended. Hit him. Scale up. It's a two-turn clock. I have Bowmasters... When my opponent chooses to brainstorm is a really big deal. Okay, that's fine. The brainstorm unfortunately does happen right now. There's a permanent from anywhere, right? Yeah, so if my bowmaster gets countered, I'll still scale up and be a two turn clock. The Uro is a problem, though. That's disastrous. Is it? Can my opponent wasteland me? They need another land in hand for wasteland to make sense. It's so good if they don't wasteland me. But they might need that land to play Uro. Fuck. Alright. So this is a dead draw. I attack for four. My opponent's at three. We'll see what they do. That is very notably not a removal spell or a third land for Uro. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know <laughs> that I feel like I deserve a 4-1 today. So here we are at the end of the league. We did, we did well. Scoreboard says deck good. I'm not sure that I more generally agree. I think the general power of the blue-black shell in Legacy right now is incredibly high. Whether you're doing that in some sort of Delver or Delver-adjacent style deck list, whether you're doing that in the blue-black scam reanimator tempo hybrid combo deck list, I think this general configuration of cards is just incredibly strong. With specifics to this build, our death shadows were largely dead weight in this league. I'm not sure that I played one as a reasonable sized creature the entire league. Like, we won games with Merktides and Trolls and Bowmasters and, and whatnot, and like narrow hate cards like this. The Limb Duels Vault not replacing itself immediately was a really big deal in one of the rounds where I couldn't just turn this into another card immediately. Like, it, I will admit that, like, that was me forgetting that the card did not, like, give you the first card. Like, I cast that at the wrong time. But the fact that I could not immediately use that to, like, grab a spell bomb, like, is a very big step in power level and difference from it and, you know, something like a Demonic Tutor style card or a Wishclaw Talisman type card that gives you that uh, card immediately. I think the juice was not worth the squeeze in this league today. I think the deck probably needs one less fetch land and maybe one more watery grave or maybe 
I, I don't know if you get away with five fetchables here. Like, now I'm going to look. What is the normal land count of Blue Black Death Shadow? It looks like there's a little bit of variety between five and seven fetchables. So yeah, we are objectively on the lower end of fetchables here. I think at the very least one Watery Grave has to be swapped for an Underground Sea, and I, th I think I want one more fetchable in the deck. The cute tech probably has to go. You know, it's it, it's sad. Like, you, you have the good idea, and like, sometimes this will go and find the Null Rod and be incredibly impactful. But I think this setting up Death's Shadow is not working out enough. And I think this deck, on average, is trying to be fast enough in the games that the speed at which this card operates isn't appropriate. Like, if this card is another Grief and maybe, like, two, one Bowmasters and one other piece of interaction, I feel like the deck is a lot smoother. So, we tested the Spicy Shadow, but I think we give the Spicy Shadow the thumbs down, despite the fact that, like, the League objectively went well. But, you know, if you want to do better than I did, consider checking out toamagic.com and using promo code THRAVENU to save a little bit on your order if you need copies of Lim Duel's Vault or anything else. And folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!